So our scripture passage on this third Sunday where we're uh, focusing on wisdom is Proverbs 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let us say that together. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when Ailey was about five or six, um, we as a family, it was at that time, uh, it was before Will, so it was, um, it was only three of us, three in the family, and we went to an observatory, a big telescope uh, pointed up in the sky, and there was a small little eyepiece on the side, and it was a Bruno Dunes uh, observatory. Ailey was so excited. John was so excited. We were so excited to share this uh, look at the, at the space uh, to our daughter. And John, in his excitement, said to her, when you put your eye on that telescope, that planet is just going to poke out at you. And it's just going to be right there. And you're just going to be able to touch it. It's going to be so awesome. So we were so excited. Got there, you know, to go to the observatory is a complicated thing. They're usually way out of town. You have to go at night, uh, inconvenient time. And so we did all those things and, and got there and keeping our little, our little girl up late. And we get to, to our turn, we waited in line, get to our turn to put our eye on that big, massive telescope. And Ailey's turn, and she, she just won't do it. She, she freezes. She stands still, and John's like, what's wrong? We, we came all this way. Come on, don't you want to see it? And she goes, no, I don't, want, I don't want it to jump out at me. <laughs> and so Dawn, had, in his excitement, had caused her to have some fear of what was going to happen. It's going to jump out at you. And, um, and so we got over, uh, over that and said, no, it's just going to be super close when you look in there. And uh, she looked in and, had this, and shared that same amazement that we have for, for stars and space. And um, uh, it was a treasured moment, a funny one, but a treasured moment where we all got to share our awe about what's out in the universe. So our, our solar system is amazing. You know, we have the planets in order go Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And you know, I did not mention the no longer a planet Pluto, right? It's no longer in the list of planets. But they do actually believe that there is a planet nine. Have you heard this? So out beyond uh, the planets, there's uh, the Kuiper Belt. It's a belt of asteroids, mostly water asteroids, that are way, way out there. And they've been watching these, and they've been trying to name them and number them and count them and observe them and watch their pattern to see if any of them are going to change patterns and change out of their rotation and might become something that's heading toward Earth. So it's important to know what's in our neighborhood, right? So they're counting those and watching them, and they have found a few asteroids in the Kuiper belt that are not behaving as they should behave. They're not orbiting in their usual fashion around the sun. They're a little bit unpredictable. They're rotating in a very different fashion out there in the Kuiper belt. And so numbers have been uh, have been calculated, and uh, observations have been made, and the only solution possible, and they're near certain of this, is that there is a massive ninth planet way, way out there. Have you heard this? It's supposed to be about ten times the size of Earth. Now, whether it's a rocky planet, probably not. Whether it's made of ice, all that Kuiper uh, belt, uh, uh, asteroids all clumped together, maybe. 
It could be a gas planet that was kicked way out there from big Jupiter's formation and all that Jupiter is in charge of and kicked it out of the way and kicked it way out there. That's probably the most likely scenario. It's a gas planet, very similar to Jupiter, that was kicked way, way, way out there. Then it is so far out there that the sun's light does not reflect back very easily. So we've got to figure out how to find it, even though mathematically and by all that's happening in the Kuiper Belt, we know that it's there. So until it's actually, you know, until they see it directly, they have not named it. So it's, the, it's Planet Nine, and it has not been given a name, even though there's evidence that it's there. So sometimes I wonder about evidence of faith. Do you ever wonder about that? Am I faithful? What does it mean to be faithful? Does faith have any value in the world? So sometimes I think about evidence of faith. And so I think about, I remember when I was walking the Camino de Santiago and I would encounter people and you had your usual questions that you asked, where are you from? How far have you walked today? Where are you heading tonight? The usual things. Uh, but you would all, I would also ask, and this was a really, really personal question, why are you walking the Camino at all? Why are you walking 500 miles to this ancient place that's supposed to hold the bones of St. Peter? Um, why are you walking this route? And I would hear all kinds of things, uh, but most of the time it wasn't spiritual. In fact, most people would say, oh, I'm not doing it for religious reasons. I'm not walking for religious reasons. I'm walking for, you know, fitness or I had a vacation or I had two weeks, you know, whatever. And most people would say, uh, would make, be really pointed about that. I'm not doing it for religious reasons. But then I would see them later that day in a grand cathedral or maybe a small little quaint church and they'd be sitting in the corner weeping. And I would, I would think to myself, they're not doing this for religious reasons. Evidence of faith. Sometimes we look for evidence of faith. A couple, just a, last week I was asked to say the prayer for the domestic violence awareness walk it's from the courthouse just right there uh, all the way down uh, main street and i said a blessing to begin uh, the walk and we had you could look out at the audience at the crowd and i'm guessing that this is kind of how the crowd went that over here it looked like police officers and social services uh, that were available for domestic violence. They were all kind of clumped together. And then over here, not, I mean, they were really close to me at the stage. And then a little bit further back were just individuals just there, uh, not really close in. And I'm guessing that they were victims of domestic violence, people that have had personal experience with this. And I, sp and I said the prayer asking for God's presence in our lives. And sometimes we look for evidence of faith. And I was, at, I was, people came up to me afterwards, thank you for coming. We don't always have a prayer at the beginning, how nice it is to be reminded of God's presence. This week, I, um, we are going to do the Kelly Shelter uh, this winter. Uh, the city has only allowed it for this, this second year. Um, but to help support the Kelly Shelter, we're working on having a day center, having churches volunteer to house the homeless during the day, um, uh, have a warm place to be during the day rather than just right downtown. Um, so I've been going to area churches, and a fellow pastor and I have gone in, asked them 
if they would open their building during the day. In having those conversations, I've gotten to see places of worship. We're not the only place that's beautiful in Medford to worship. I've gone in and seen that they're setting up for an AA group that's about to meet, or they're, they're active in some other ministry. I got to go in to several churches this week and see that there's ministry happening in a lot of different ways in our churches in Medford, to Medford. and we're so lucky, and I... I'm reminded that at times we look for evidence of faith. Yesterday, about 30 of us uh, walked in the Pride Parade uh, in Ashland. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, we had our banner, uh, we had uh, made posters, rainbow posters, all kinds of wonderful sayings. Um, and we walked and we handed out candy and a, uh, a note from the United Methodist uh, Church of the Rogue youth group. I handed out left and right, small children, all ages, I handed them out. And uh, we, I posted a picture of our banner and our big crowd of folks before the parade started. I posted a picture on, on our Facebook page, Church of the Rogue. And a woman, post, woman that was at the parade, she, she, um, she wrote on there uh, a reply to my post. She said, thank you for being there today. It was so nice to see such a loving and accepting church. It makes me and my family want to come back to church. Sometimes we look for evidence of faith in the world. So our passage today is, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I don't know about you, but this is, this is a little bit challenging. Fear of the Lord, fear of God is not something that we really talk about very much. We're really a God loves you kind of church, God accepts you, we're, you know, in, in Wesley's tradition, we're all about grace and acceptance. So I want to help define what the Bible, especially the Old Testament, means about fear of the Lord. You know, in, in most of the Old Testament, um, everything that happens is the hand of God. That is good things and bad things, mighty things uh, and, and subtle things, all are the act and the hand of God. So a fear of God is really a constant awareness. It's that, it's, if you're like a, a dog on a leash, it's that constant pull and the connection that you can have with your animal to communicate that what, what you want to happen with them. It's that constant connection with God can be the beginning of wisdom. Now, we know that it's not fear in the same sense of fight or flight. That just does not make sense to what God wants us to do. God does not want us to run away, and God is not always, God is not asking us to fight anything. God does the work, right? So we know it's not in our typical definition of fear. And in fact, Moses, when he saw the burning bush, God's word was, do not be afraid for this is holy ground. Take your shoes off. This is holy ground. So the fear of God is more a sense of awe and wonder and connection um, to be alert and aware of where God is. And at times we look and decipher through our world. We look for evidence of faith in the world. I wonder if at times looking for faith is more like the evidence of the ninth planet. They know it's out there because of the pull of the Kuiper Belt asteroids. There's such evidence of it. 
They know it's there even though they haven't found it. I wonder if faith can be like that. That it is there in our life if we are connected to God and connected to the wisdom that God wants to show us. That there is evidence of faith in our lives. If we see the patterns See the activity and the movement of love and acceptance and beauty and justice and humanity and the beautiful, creative possibilities that God is always acting out. So perhaps the wise person in that fear of God is ever connected to that question of where is faith in the world each and every moment of the day. So you have a job now. You can have wisdom. It is connecting to this awareness of God so that you may have evidence of faith in your life. Amen. Our